Part six is gonna start by me lighting up a. Oh no! Fuck! Not a smoke. That was gonna be a total pun too, because my first question here: Lolly Metal reviewer favorite country for mute. What the hell? What just happened? <laughs> favorite way to smoke cannabis? I got tripped up there. Um, you know, usually through a joint in a bowl. Just do it. Legalize it, man. Legalize it. Mr. Pope Dick, ever heard of a doom metal band called Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats? If not, could you check them out? I would have the ability to. I certainly do. Um, however, I've not heard of them, so I will have to check them out. Uh, favorite country for music? Hey, here's a repeat. Oh, man, I have a feeling this is going to happen a lot, but it's okay. Uh, favorite country for music? I'm just going to go with, uh, actually, a continent. It's Europe. And I would probably go Scandinavia if you want to go for a region. I just... They have some really, really great musicians up there. And that's not discounting those from Britain, those from Germany, those from any other, you know, place in the world. So, there you go. Uh, congrats, man. If you can create a thrash metal supergroup, who would be in it? Asks Stan Olson. Oh, man. I would probably have uh, Mustaine on guitars. I would probably have... As much as I hate to say it, I'd probably like to have Kirk Hammett on... Uh, second guitar, so that duo would actually be pretty damn formidable. Uh, I would have Bobby Blitz Ellsworth on vocals. I would not have Lars Ulrich on drums. <laughs> uh, I would probably actually go with uh, Dave Lombardo from Slayer. And I think I'd have Scott Ian on bass. I, I think that's pretty fair. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, and that's really just going based off of, and you know what? Fuck Kirk Hammett. Alex Skolnick from Testament. There you go. 94 James, are you a fan of hardcore music such as Converge, Cleaver Talk, uh, Refused, or and Gallows, or anything along those lines? Great channel, keep it up, man. Thank you uh, for being a fan. Um, I listen to a little bit of hardcore, not very much. Uh, I don't have any hate for it. In fact, there's a customer of mine that comes in that gets a lot of old school uh, New York hardcore bands uh, from the, uh, the the early stages of it, their existence, and also a lot of crust punk and a lot of the uh, old punk scene from uh, that era. And uh, it, he's really interesting to talk to, you know, it's, you know, the music itself is, is just alright for me. It gets a little bit repetitive for me, but uh, I really love the energy, I really love the passion. Uh, Constipated Assassin, <laughs> probably my favorite name so far. Uh, what is your favorite subgenre of thrash, traditional, technical, crossover, or blackened? Um, I actually really love traditional. I'm a big, big advocate of traditional thrash metal, uh, mainly because both of the waves had bands that really boasted tremendous amounts of talent, and even those that were not listed amongst the, uh, you know, the big four, or, you know, the big four of the second wave, you know, the big four of Teutonic Thrash, you know, bands such as Heathen, Onslaught, that often get forgotten uh, by a lot of people, uh, definitely have a lot of, there, there's a lot of, um, you know, attackers, another one that comes to mind, uh, there, thrash was one of those genres where there was a lot of bands kind of being, uh, you know, signed up a little bit, and they lasted maybe for an album or two, either that, or it didn't really have that same traditional sound, uh, but it was one reason why heavy music definitely had a profound impact on the 1980s. Uh, let's see. We have from Callan, the punk rocker, congratulations dude, what's your opinion on Green Day? I, I don't mind Green Day, I don't have a problem with them, I really don't. I really liked American Idiot. Uh, that actually restored my faith in the band because uh, the, the album previous to that, I was just totally disenfranchised by. I really hated it. And then um, the album after American Idiot, which sucked so bad, I can't even remember what the bloody fuck it's called, uh, it was just terrible. I really love the uh, the Uno, Dos, and Trey idea, though I've only heard Uno, and I really liked it. And the sam But the samples that I've heard from Dos and Trey, I, I didn't like. Uh, I'm not sure if it were just bad samples or maybe it was just too much Green Day at once, you know what I mean? And I see that you have another question up here, do I watch WWE? Uh, I have in the past, I'm not currently. Uh, I would love to actually uh, watch Mania this year. I've done that every year for the past couple. I used to do a wrestling channel uh, with my best friend and another guy, uh, which unfortunately folded, so yeah, I, there's an interest there. Yeah, Edward the Great 910, what bands would book on... Uh, what bands would you book on a big four of death metal tour? Uh, there's like four questions here. Um, I'm going to address these very, very quickly. Big four of death metal, obituary, morbid angel, cannibal corpse, and probably uh, death of Chuck was still alive. Jero of Sabbath, do you like better, Ozzy or Dio? 
probably Ozzy because there's more, but the Dio era is also just incredible. What is your favorite non-Big Four Thrash album? Probably the years of Decay by Overkill. Which side project was better, Halford or Fight? I really have a soft spot for Fight. I'm just going to go and throw that out there. Halford has some great material. There's also more material to go off of. Uh, but I think Fight, just tooth and nail, is a little bit better. Uh, we're going to go with the top three slam death metal bands. What the hell is that even considered? Asinine, Venus, Trap, Hob, whatever. Uh, I got nothing. Uh, De La Cedera, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right, 90. Besides album reviewing, do you play any ins musical instruments such as an electric guitar or a keyboard? I sing, and I um, do basic chords on a guitar. I suck. So it, it, it's not even worth mentioning, but I just did. <laughs> Crazy Muffin was the absolute best and absolute worst concerts that you have ever attended. Absolute worst con uh, concert that I ever attended was probably the Vans Warped Tour. Vans Warped Tour, Vans sucks. Great atmosphere, don't get me wrong. But Vans Warped Tour no longer is a punk festival. It's no longer a punk fe It was originally intended to be a punk festival. It's become more of a modern emo core slash whatever the fuck festival that has absolutely no goddamn relevance to these days. Yeah, I was there for literally two hours. I didn't even get a chance to fucking see Bad Religion that day. It was just an all-around piss-poor experience, terrible day. I wish I could get my money back. Best concert? Oh, man. I have many. You know, I've seen Opeth a couple of times, Porcupine Tree, going down in the, you know, blizzard of 2011 to see Immortal and Absu. Uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers just last year was just amazing. Uh, really, I've had a lot of great shows that I've really enjoyed. Uh, what is your favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner meals, along with your favorite dessert dish? <laughs> it's another repeat question. Um, I really love French toast. Uh, I really like pizza. I also really like steak and uh, macaroni and cheese, so there's a couple right there. Uh, I eat a lot of chicken because uh, chicken is a little bit cheaper, and also you can do a lot of things with chicken, especially with the right spices, uh, with the right toppings, you know, the right sauces and things like that. Uh, I also adore bacon. Love fucking bacon. Favorite dessert dish? Probably some mint chocolate chip ice cream. All right, the Death Slicer. Whatever. I am a huge fighting game geek, and so I'm going to ask you what your opinion is on fighting games. Uh, asking about, you know, games like Tekken, Mortal Kombat, Soul Calibur, King of Fighters, Street Fighter. I'm more of a Super Smash Brothers guy, but I definitely know what you're talking about. Uh, I've played Mortal Kombat, Tekken, I have talked about, uh, or I've played uh, Street Fighter. Uh, it, it's fun to a certain extent, but it has kind of like a shelf life for me, because it's very repetitious. Uh, you do have to formulate a bit of a strategy from one character to the next. You can't just button mash uh, if you're doing a one-player mode and expect to get far uh, and expect to, you know, make it to the end and basically endure the challenge. Uh, that's the reason why I kind of like Super Smash Brothers a little bit more. If you're playing against the AI, it does get predictable, just like any other fighting game would. However, whenever you're playing against other people, uh, and in this case it's like four other people, uh, sometimes you have to be a little bit more... Uh, you actually have to have a little bit of a game plan because every, even if you're playing against three people that you know maybe haven't played before, there's always that one person that you constitute as a threat. Maybe because they've played a lot of video games before, or they just have a look to them. You know, whenever they pick up the controller and start playing, you know, they just seem like they know what they're doing. They're getting it quicker, so you kind of want to you know try to take them out, either that or dispose of the weak links. You know, it all depends on what you do. Uh, if you heard an album in those genres. Uh oh, wow, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm sorry. Uh, IX Golden Boy XI, what's a band that you're secretly into but too embarrassed to admit? I've done this a couple different times before, so uh, uh, I'm going to go with Miguel again. So, there you go. Uh, last year, you began touching more frequently on alternative and more regular rock music as well as metal with your reviews. Can we expect this genre expansion to continue with perhaps hip-hop and electronica? Obviously, you don't have to review music that you don't like, uh, blah, 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 blah. But if you ever heard an album in these genres, would you review it or are you trying to keep the channel mostly metal? Alex Martin 51 that is a great, great point. Uh, yes, I would like to continue to do that. I've not gotten the opportunity to do that very much so far this year because there's not been a lot of great um, rock releases. I would like to continue to expand that a little bit. Um, Hip-hop is not something I'm going to do too, too much of. I think if I am going to do the expansion I'm currently going into, I may do a little bit more indie as I listen to it. But a lot of the stuff that I review, even in the supposed indie scene, I, I have broken through. So, you know what I mean? 
it's uh, I, I would like to you know touch base on some older artists releasing new stuff. I might try to do some re-releases, whatever it might be. Just whatever really comes to mind, you know. It, it, I'm not really looking to plan anything in stone on Q and A answers part three, six, whatever. Anyways, uh, base bait, can you start up on the underground again? Um, no. Uh, in fact, I'll just go ahead and say that that's been canceled. I hate to do that. I it's. I feel like an asshole. I feel like a prick. I got in way over my head. Way over my head. So I want to personally apologize to anybody out there who's watching this, who uh, who submitted something that never got reviewed. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And that was poor planning on my behalf. That was overambition. That was hubris on my behalf. And uh, I am extremely sorry for that. However, base bait, I have received your demo. Um... I definitely will have to pop it in sometime. I, I feel terrible, especially to you, because you've been persistent with me. Um, but it's been more than a year, and I've barely touched the idea. So it's time to just put it to rest. Mr. Beaner97, what are the main? What are your main knocks against the power metal genre, and what do you hope to see advance in the general metal, metal community? Uh, my main knocks are probably because there's a lot of predictability to it. Um, I'm not even all that concerned about the sound sounding too fluttery or too romantic or, you know, it's it's positive metal or anything like that. Too many dragons, whatever, you know. The whole fantasy thing is actually kind of cool. Uh, it's just the fact that, you know, it, it does have a very predictable flow to it. Now, a lot of metal does, but I noticed this in power metal a lot more. Um, perhaps because uh, there was a time frame where I listened to a lot of power metal. And whenever that happened, I just kind of picked up on it a little bit and I wanted a little bit more variety. Now I know that there is variety in power metal, don't get me wrong, but I typically seem to like a lot of diversity and there were more often than not bands where there just wasn't enough. That's probably my main knock. Um, and I have to see in the general metal community advance a little bit more in the way of uh, a little bit more of acceptance. And, and I know it's kind of a general idea, but I think that there's been way too much of this genre subdivision and way too much in the way of bashing and hatred so I think we just kind of back up a little bit and realize that we're all listening to the same music here uh, that is of course if you're not actually listening to metal and you're just calling you know fallout boy metal which no uh, let's do two more before we head out of here and uh, actually head out of here probably for the day uh, I Vortst I cover killer have you ever been moved to tears by a piece of metal music numerous times, um, most recently by um, the Fen album that was released in January. Uh, you know, the Spectra is just such a great song, uh, and it definitely moved me because of the way in which it just was constructed. Uh, it's happened before numerous times. Um, I would probably have to make a list. I could even do a top ten list based on it and have, you know, 40,000 people on the internet call me a pussy. It's so whatever. Um, and finally, Mr. Metal Blacksmith. Have you heard Psy? If so, do you like them? And what's your favorite album by them? I got into them because of Imaginary Sonescape. Sonescape is a word that I still use to this day because I just absolutely I just adore what it means. And I think that the album is a fitting representation of what that means. So I would have to claim that as my favorite by the band. And yeah, they're just a really, they're a really, really tight band. Uh, they have a lot of creativity to them. They are not afraid to push boundaries. And I really like what they do. That's going to be it, guys. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit more. I'm hoping to record some more for this on Sunday. So we'll see. For now, I bid you adieu.